All right, one second, one second. I haven't started yet. We can do this. Did you set your language to Korean? Because that happens sometimes. Not English. <laughs> All right, let's see if they we get voices less. because they're pretty cool. And all the effort in they're actually kind of handy. Would have gone to waste really? Until okay. Until We're only hearing. Uh, You're hearing voices. Just yeah. Your hour has come again. The voice isn't that quiet. Now. Well, you can hear the ambient noise. The ambient noise yeah. is loud. So. The right man in the, the wrong place, place can, can make, make all the difference in the world. <laughs> so, so wake, wake up, up, Mr. Freeman. Wake, wake, wake up, up and smell the ashes. Smell the ashes. <laughs> and time starts now. Okay. Wait, wait. Wait, he said something. This is my third this year. I heard his voice for a second. This is awesome. But yeah, this is Half Life 2. It's a bit different from uh, Half-Life 1 in terms of like the pacing of the game. There's a lot more cutscenes, but you tend to get a, a lot of early movement options and a lot more high jumps and sick tricks. So I'll try and show off the, the basic form of movement that's going to be pretty much used for most of the game. The ABH, which is... Uh, you will face backwards, jump a lot, and you'll gain speed as you do so. And this is uh, a glitch the source engine. This next section is time, so I can pick up this Chinese food box, and it will actually come in handy. But you can kind of see the basics of the ABH, where as I'm jumping, I start getting faster and faster, and it gets to a movement cap of like 3,500 units, which Gordon Freeman is just in space at that point. Now, the reason I have this Chinese food box is because you can do something to NPCs in this game as a safeguard. Um, when an NPC has an object on their head as they're moving, there's a chance they'll teleport. It's not consistent, can't get it every time. Sometimes the NPC will just kind of bonk. Sometimes oh. they don't care or the item will just get knocked away. But uh, during the cutscene, it's the goal is to get as many teleports as possible. <laughs> so this guy, this guy doesn't care right now. It's like, all right, I got hit, hit in the head with the Chinese food box. But essentially, if I put an object in a, an NPC at the right time, at the right moment, and the game thinks they're you know, going, going to get stuck or something, they'll just get teleported forward. Now, this game is action, you know, FPS, lots of movement, but it's also a stacking simulator. <laughs> One other important thing to remember as he's moving around is the fastest form of movement in this game is backwards. So we do a lot that we can to, like, come up with consistent setups for all of the launches, but sometimes randomness just occurs and deaths do happen. So yep. There is a pretty good chance at some point that I will just skyrocket <laughs> into the air. Yeah. And I don't really have an explanation for why it happened, it just kind of happens. There will probably be several deaths to fall damage, just because that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. unfortunate angles in happen. high speed, so it's like you, you can't really do anything. Yeah. can't even see where you're going. Another thing, this game is going to be run on easy, because mostly due to the randomness, uh, you really need a lot of health to try to cover for the random launches you can get. Um, and the enemies are just brutal on hard. So it's really tough to play this game as a speed game on hard. Plus, all the doors in this game are programmed correctly. Oh yeah, you can't. You also can't get okay, infinity Gordon, health. So <laughs> there is no plus one health, unfortunately. The thing with uh, Man, that's what I was of. there we go. There's a teleport. Teleport. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. It saves like a, a second or something. The thing with uh, enemies in this game is there's lots of hit scan enemies. So Half Life One has lots of, has very few soldiers and lots of creatures. Half Life Two is mostly the combine. So what ends up happening is because there's so many enemies with hit scan weapons, oh, it's nice. kind of hard to avoid it. Do the quick. Yeah, and I just clipped through that guard. He was still getting in position when that cutscene started, so or when, is it, when I got there, so I was able to just kind of like jump and crouch through him. And yeah, that's that's the ABH. That's basic you, uh, movement. You just go really fast, really quickly. Oops, forgot to crouch. But the thing is, you go fast, and we haven't gotten into it, but there's something called collision jumping, which uh, will just send you into like really, really high up. Yeah. Also, this boot will be handy in stopping the combine. It is our first weapon versus them. This part of the game, um, I can't actually take damage uh, just because there is no real damage setting since I don't have the HGB suit yet. Now, if I hit that guy with the boot, he'll stop in place and I can jump over him. Get in here, quick. Keep moving. Head for the All right, we'll keep moving. What's going to happen here is I might get this set up, I might not. Oh, no, I'm going to be too slow for it. So I'll go ahead and show off uh, what, I, what I want to. If you don't get the setup here, you just kind of go around the, the building as normal. But I can take this heat can and climb this wall. 
And I want to show uh, just some of the glitches that can happen in this game when you come in from the wrong angle. So I'm up here on top of the roof, there's an invisible wall, but I can hop up here and keep on hopping. And I'm going to approach the next section from the wrong angle. It's going to go ahead and kind of mess up the uh, loading of the zones. For example, I go in here and there's stuff now. But the outside world is going to I want to put the guard here with this box so not hit me and knock me out fast. And now we're in a cutscene. And we're in a cutscene for quite some time. Dr. Freeman, this is Alex. I presume. She ruins runs. I better hurry. A lot of this game is learning how to manipulate the AI and just Sarah? getting them to do stuff get as well as landing those teleports. Where is that box bound? There we go. Uh, teleporting objects can be better if they're flat on a surface. <laughs> I so I could grab a bar barrel and try to bonk Alex in the head, but there's a good chance uh, it will do nothing. So hopefully, I'll be able to get her just to uh, move around move quickly. My father worked with me back in Blackwater. Um, I don't think there's anything else sure important for the cutscenes. Uh, oh, not every teleport is useful. Sometimes I'll get someone to move forward, but they'll be stuck in dialogue, and the trigger for the next action isn't based off their positioning so much as their dialogue or timing. So Remember in cases like that, Mesa? all right, all right, and get a cool teleport. But it will do absolutely nothing. Okay, my dad started on Dr. Breen. This is my favorite hallway. Get, come on, Alex, come on. No, nah, box is gone. And actually, it can, okay, it can despawn. And it just did as uh, the box kind of flung out of. Wait, there it is. Funny, you <laughs> on this day in There's a good chance when something uh, is on the ground during a loading screen, it will despawn if it's not supposed to be there. Alex, please. Yeah. Alex, come on. Work with me. <laughs> that is actually a, a time-saving teleport. If I get one here. It's a dangerous route to my father's oh. lab. Through the open Nothing. Hours. Such bad luck. The source en engine giveth, the source engine taketh. But time and time again, I will just bonk NPCs in the head. There we go. Hey. Little one. Little, it saves time. Now, welcome to Climbers Lab. This is the first big cutscene. This is the reveal where we get uh, the HEV suit again. Here's the cactus. A lot of people miss it, but you can teleport the cactus. You can also get a book. Now, if you teleport the book into the cactus, the book will go flying. But first, I actually want to make sure I try and go for the teleports here. Not quite, not quite. Yeah, I gotta have Bella with uh, Kleiner. Also, in the, the segment to run of this, Pretty much every cutscene involved is staring at someone's butt, but uh, I'm going to try and avoid that just uh, for a change of pace. Shout out to Matmo. Streamer, are you like 12? <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is Teleport City. You have to get all the teleports here. This is like the worst, uh, this is actually a good reset point because if you don't get the teleports, all that time builds up and it can be plus 20, plus 25 just from uh, bonking and season the head wrong. Man, Gordon, you stirred up the hive. We can't keep him here long, Doc. It'll jeopardize everything we've worked for. Don't worry. He's coming with me. By the way, this works in real life, too. You should try it on all yeah. your friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you walk up behind someone, hit him in the head with a book, they'll probably you move forward. <laughs> because I still have nightmares about that cat. No, no. There's actually a lot of really cool details in the lab. Like, for Valve, this was going to be the, the first introduction to a lot of the physics stuff. Like, you're in this cutscene, you're in this cutscene for a long time, you can do stuff like check out the book and just see what's going on. So, there's a, a few details, we'll, we'll check them out in a bit. And some places you're not supposed to, supposed to be able to access. Well, I'm going to start moving so I can bonk him some more. Yeah. There's a chance that the item will just drop if you go for the teleports. Which, when it happens, it's a little bit annoying because you have to pick it up again. And there's Lamar. So, and really quickly, I want to go ahead and charge up my suit because it skips a line of dialogue if I don't do it later. Or if I don't do it now. And you can jump up here. Here's Lamar. She's DB, completely harmless. If you jump up here, you can go ahead and clean up Connor's lab a bit. Walk on a computer. It'll send it flying. Like I can just see jars floating around. And like, it turns out Lamar can walk through stuff. It'll be another week before I can coax her out there. Yeah. Go back to the teleports. Gotta have your book handy. Barney, you're not an animal person. 
Coming up is my favorite line of dialogue uh, in the game for the sole reason that um, they actually printed out. He's describing our suit to us and all the cool qualifications, so when he pulls out this binder, he's going to start reading from it. And for some reason, they actually put the line he says on the binder in very, very low resolution font and then gibberish. So, like, the, the Mark V hazardous suit you know, has, has been redesigned for comfort, but for some reason there's no other dialogue. Like, it's, it's that weird combination of putting in attention to detail but forgetting the rest. Now this is like, this is the big moment of teleports. This will make or break your red letter day. Alex will look at you for a bit. Come on. Come on, Alex. You coming? Oh, no. Look, scum! Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Uh, so we, you can take the book with her. <laughs> so this is another cut, like a cutscene. But interestingly enough, this is super unskippable. Like to the point where if I clip outside that window, which is where I appear next, I would actually just be in a void of nothingness because uh, you don't finish the cutscene uh, outside this door. There's a separate copy of this place that you finish the cutscene in. So there's actually, there's actually two Finders Labs. Yep. That's that's the case in a lot of Valve games, not just Half-Life 2. It appears all over the place. Anytime the lighting changes, usually the lighting doesn't change. You go to a different part of the map. Now, I just uh, land on that part of the vent, and when Lamar comes out of there, it's not going to make any sound. Small little bug. It's kind of neat that it's triggered by, by anything. If I mean, if the headcraft could trigger... Oops, I forgot about that. If the headcraft could trigger that sound, then... Why can't Gordon? This is frame perfect, by the way. In a scripted run, that's the only thing you use scripts for. <laughs> Legitimately, I actually love this cutscene um, when this game got released. Like, it was holy crap! I'm I'm in this city. I now have the HEV suit. There's work? teleportation. It's actually back from the first game, and then you know, stuff happens. My relief is almost palpable. Well, I guess for little Fantastic. details in this room, there's security well, monitors that monitor this one corner. And <laughs> I believe this also covers a tiny, yeah, yeah, tiny yeah, little stairwell. And it just triggers between those two things. Lots of just know. random little details Good in the lab. Job, like science gibberish. Really More monitors. Right, if you see an NPC in 3D, like this, not just a, a static image, uh, they're actually on the map somewhere. So, uh, for example, in the early parts of the train station, there's green on monitors. If I no clip, I could uh, show you green in an empty room just sitting there standing. In three, two, one. Uh, Barney, if you'd be so kind. By the way, this is actually the worst part of the runs. This guy right here is the worst NPC in Half Life 2 runs. We'll come into him a lot later. He's a big source of RNG towards the end of the run. Alright, here's Lamar. No sound. Now, welcome to an interesting state. Right now, I'm in the teleportation state. I'm really slow, but I can sprint. Now, if I sprint, just hold on the sprint button, it actually drains my sprint. Also, if I crouch, I crouch really slowly. And then when you pop into other sections, I'm crouching. You kind of like fall to the ground, then rise up steadily. Also, the time I believe is a little bit past 12. Now, this uh, movement doesn't really matter, except the sprint. I can actually stop watch the game. Uh, if I'm sprinting, I'm sprinting the rain over my room with it. And I'll start drowning in the game, just bugged out, and I can't proceed. So, for obvious reasons, I won't be sprinting. This is a major plot NPC, and here's a big fish. Now, you might think Studio is putting out the time on the clock as a little detail, but that's actually how we accurately time our runs. We look at the clock again when we get the green slab at the end of the game. <laughs> And speed run starts now. So, I did this earlier. I did the little wall climb. The way this works is if you have an item, you can pick it up and repeatedly jump. The way um, my inputs are set up, the only special input I have is the mouse wheel is bound to jump. So right now I'm picking up the item and jumping a lot. And that's how I'm falling. Now this is where you normally get the pro mark. But, you don't need that. That's, that's <laughs> Barney being annoying. I want to deal with him. I know he's going to be a pain later, so why give him the satisfaction of helping you out? 
Instead, we skip that uh, cutscene, grab this box, and we're going to uh, keep item climbing. I don't have a weapon, which is kind of a big issue. Normally, you're supposed to break down these boards, but now I'm just going to item climb over that fence because, hey, I can. But now we're going to start seeing enemies, and unlike the early part of the game, I can now take damage and die. And there are guards that will like to make that happen, also a train that will do that. So first, I have to navigate through this section. You can kind of jump on these boards on the side, and then scoot out and start knock me up. So, oh, I'm dying around. So I'm gonna get shot a bit. Uh, if you get knocked up there, you'll uh, body block this doorway. So I'll, I'll take a bit of damage, but it should be okay. 65 is kind of low. I'm gonna give it a fall damage in a second. So we'll see how this goes. But because I have a weapon, I have to skip most barriers. Uh, I can't get any barrels, I can't remove anything to keep myself alive and protected. Let's see if I can do it for safety. It's very possible to die right here. And we'll run out, put a wall, and we'll go ahead and skip a bunch of train chains. That train can't hit you and kill you, it's also very likely when you run by a part of the wall that <laughs> Now we have a gun. We don't have ammo for the game, but we'll get some in a bit. I think I have just enough to break up the box. I'll try and get some from the NPC for safety's sake. So that train is frozen in time. There's the box. This box is handy, of course. You can use the item to fly what it wants. So, annoying barriers, annoying guys, annoying time and situations. Getting good at the ADH here. There's lots of just random trees that are used for uh, background effects. They'll block you up. But go around here and trigger a loading zone. Now also, this is all hmm? think, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say this is all supposed to be like cleared out with a crowbar. So you have to find alternative routes. In this case it is struggling to get on the train. And when you see him maybe H if you see the screen twitching up and down, that's because he's spamming the scroll wheel as fast as fast as possible. He's got a uh, jump down to both mouse wheel up and down. Yeah, it, it's, this game is actually a bit of an endurance run it, because you know, my middle finger will get air tired at the end. So I got some ammo. Uh, normally you would just kind of run past that guy after you kill him instead of going for the ammo. But for safety's sake, I uh, picked it up because it will be useful in a second. So the big part of this game is like the major tricks and like lots of little bits of the game. Because you can run through this game and do the big tricks and hold it up the most of the time. It's about optimizing a lot of the little, little stuff. With the ammunition, I was able to open that box and get some help. Here I have to make sure that if the barrel's going to explode, it'll explode in ways that won't kill me, or I'll, be, or I'll have to get to a safe spot. So I think I'll be able to There you go. Once those barrels explode, it opens the gate, and A, O, K. So you can actually just jump through those sections. Code 3, moving on. And I just have to feed the barnacles to Harold, and he'll be pleased with me and let me through. So there's a bug here. You can sprint when you're in the water, and you go fast in the water, but it also uses, uh, I think, twice the other. So I'm going to go ahead and sprint in the water, and when you come out of the water sprinting, the one goes really high up. Kind of like a free willy as a scientist. And I kind of fell. Oops. That's okay. We'll, we'll take the normal route. You want to try and like get to the good area there, maintaining the ABH. If not, you can kind of hop to the side here and jump. It still might not be enough. There we go. Skip the seesaw puzzle. I know. It's my favorite puzzle. Um, if you fall in the seesaw puzzle, you actually still don't have to do it because you can use one of the concrete blocks. But you normally use the seesaw puzzle to iron climb out. This game has a lot of backup strategies. Like, there's usually a major trick and then three backup strategies. Like something that would normally go wrong. Um, because I don't have a crowbar for this section, I really need to use that crowbar. If not, it just takes too long. Okay, once this guy hops down, I'll move forward and proceed with looting stuff. If you uh, do it before he hops down, you can put it in the air, wait for him to get to that spot, and save some time, activate the trigger in advance. Also, this game has profanity, so if you're afraid of profanity, just cover your ears right now. Oh, the game is going to Okay. So, this now is a 
really cool section that's more of a running gun than kind of And the running gun sections in Half-Life 2 have very, very fast pace, a lot of action in the sense that there's enemies that will kill you, and enemies that will slow you down. It's your job to avoid or murder everybody. You get over that little, uh, or what are those called? Like the wooden, uh, kind of pallet, that's what it is. By, uh, looking to the right, looking to the left, and kind of moving around as you jump. Coming up is the SMG. Uh, every gun you pick up is used. Um, some of them are skipped though, like the Eagle and the Desert Eagle revolver and uh, uh, the pheromones for the antlion. But pretty much every gun you pick up is used at some point just because uh, there is some alternative fire or it's based on people. Can you skip the Alex gun? Yeah. <laughs> Alex gun is. Mm -hmm. So right now I need to do the iron climb. This is actually one of the harder iron climbs in the game if you're not fast. Um, I have to turn the flashlight on to see the arrow goes because this game is actually being too dark right here to draw a piece down the way. The iron climb up is small and they're man and slowing me down. Luckily it didn't hit me. Up as a guard that's going to repel from the ceiling. Um, I'm going to stop and shoot him in the face because it's not going to land on my face to put him into me. The man has to get out of control pretty quickly. Luckily, I avoided them, but they can uh, just kind of swarm Gordon and you can't get off the ladders very efficiently. Get the health, get the armor, that'd be safe. If you go through little quarters like that uh, while bouncing from the ASH, you'll maintain speed. And it's pretty important for a lot of sections to uh, not lose time. Also, quick out and climb over here. Just, oh god, FPS drop for a second. But uh, you can jump over a fence and not deal with some of these things. So, welcome to the airboat. A lot of people hate the airboat. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it either, but that's because in the speedrun there's some very nasty things you have to do with it. However, when you get, get to the airboat, there's a, uh, airport, airboat, there's a cut scene, but if you bounce off the barrel, uh, you can normally get out of it. Now, the airboat sucks for one big reason, and that's called Dance Skip. And Dam Skip is the hardest trick in the run because it really has nothing to do with the rest of the run in terms of movement. Like, I could practice every other part of Half Life 2 for 100 hours, but it won't help me do the Dam uh, damn Jump. And it's also really important for saving time. It saves about two or so minutes. So, hopefully, I can get that in the first few tries. I mean, it's a bit wonky. But as for the airboat itself, it's got some unique it's very heavy and will automatically ride itself because unlike the uh, buggy that you get later, you don't have the gravity gun for this. That you don't get later. The what? Oh yeah, the, the buggy, the buggy that, that, we'll, that you don't we'll use. see. We'll, we'll see the buggy at some point. It appears on the screen. We just don't get into it. Thank you. The reason the, the, the boat is actually kind of slow compared to the ADH. But we can't, we need the boat for a uh, skip to so that's why we're making it. Yeah, there's yeah. actually unfortunately a trigger lighter that you cannot get past unless you're in the airboat. Or you have a portal gun, which is not likely. Oh, 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 oh nice! Yes! nice. <laughs> that was crazy. Great job. Great. So uh, the reason he's driving backwards here is in the version of Half-Life 2 he's running, uh, when you enter a load zone, the airboat comes to a complete stop. And it turns out it's actually exactly as fast backwards as it is forward. So it's faster to just go backwards than it is to turn around. <laughs> There's a barrel here I have to shoot. Uh, this is actually kind of RNG in the, the sense that, oh cool, got it. The barrel's not, uh, the pistol's not too accurate at long distances. But you have to hit that barrel uh, to get that 
giant steel beam down. Get some nice loot. So Water Hazard, it's a relatively easy section in the sense that um, the movement is simple, but there's lots of big trips to uh, skip pretty much all of the levels. Normally in Water Hazard, you have to get out a lot. You do a lot of stuff across the map, like you have to open lots of gates. That barrel that I shot, normally you get close to it uh, after getting down. Um, there's lots of shenanigans with uh, the Combine Soldiers. For example, I bounce on them, and they'll rag along go crazy, but that can actually affect my movement. There's also going to be a helicopter coming up, and he's, he's a pretty cool guy. I like the helicopter. You can get him stuck, but I'm not going to do that because it wastes time, and uh, the helicopter can be really fun. Uh, I like get either lucky or unlucky. We have time for a comment. Alright, first I'm going to let you guys know that after this run is a portal and there's a donation incentive for which type of run is played. Currently, uh, Inbounds is in the lead with $3,146, but Out of Bounds is pretty close behind at $2,518. I'm going to pimp out Inbounds because I know that's what a lot of runners have been going for. Like, Inbounds run is a super cool and then a more recent focus. Out of Bounds is also a cool run, they're both amazing. But I'm going to recommend it inbounds. Also, there's a trigger right here that will close the gate um, if I walk in, into it. But the way the boat works is that animation of me getting into the boat. <laughs> that animation isn't actually an animation. The board just teleports to the boat, and the hitbox becomes uh, the boat itself. So, trigger skipped, don't have to worry about loud sirens, and the door's closing in front of it. Here's a pretty easy skip. You just have to kind of bump the boat to the side of the, uh, the wall and you just fly onto it with the wood right there. And that's the helicopter. I love the helicopter because he's a jerk. He is all your best friend in too. He's gonna drop bombs, and those bombs are either amazing or horrible. Uh, if he drops a bomb in a good position, I can actually boost off them or see if they go it. Either deep or good. If he drops a bomb in a bad position, which right now they're all pretty avoidable, but eventually the area of magnet gets much tighter. Those bombs get much nastier. So there's our copter friend. He's also the boss of this section, but we'll be skipping him, so he'll be able to go ahead and keep doing his copter friend. There we go. It's not a huge time save, but you don't want to do it too much, just because you do need a decent amount of HP. I'll be doing a Attempting a skip that is completely unreliable and completely pointless, it looks awesome. So, uh, um, I dig it. Yeah, I'll need a bit more to get that. Yeah. If it doesn't work, just like reload. It, no matter what, the effect will be good. There's also a random SMG grenade on the ground right there. Those are actually pretty important. Uh, all the explosives, uh, with the exception of the rocket launcher up there, are pretty important for general movement. You can use them to get places. Yeah very, very effectively. And this is a section that, for whatever reason, was my main learning game. It's very slippery top of the tunnel, but when you first learned game it, and when I first played it, I just could not get past that without any trouble. Also, the music stops during loading screen and it makes me sad. GG Val. Go over first, please. <laughs> Alright, Copter. I'm going to start dropping bombs for a bit. Uh, we can actually talk about the different versions. So this is the new engine. This uh, this is the version that bomb off the second one was made in, and it features the ABA. What happened was that during was it full two or full or not full two episode two episode one episode, episode two, two was the first episode one. two. Um, they took out bunny hop, and the way they kind of safeguarded against it was if you move too far or too fast forward, um, the game will slow or give you negative velocity. So, the reason I'm moving backwards is because, well, if I'm moving backwards and I get naked velocity, guess what's good for me? Also, I have no idea if that, I think that lost time, but whatever, the bombs are going pretty crazy right now. There's also times where you'll see him moving sort of diagonally forward and he'll be gaining speed like ABH. The reason that works is because since you're holding the back key, uh, the game thinks you're trying to move backwards, so instead of subtracting velocity, it adds velocity. And since you're going forward, that's good, you go forward faster. 
Uh, this is where you get bad bombs. Uh, you can actually peg you out of the air uh, doing that jump, which is awesome because you lose all control and it's pretty slow and waste a few seconds. But actually, it's pretty nice all around. That collapsed and you can slip under here. And there's going to be a tank shooting uh, missiles at me. I'm just going to juke right and left and the missiles will hold me on to where I'm going. So as long as I kind of spot back and forth and bomb the street, um, I'll be able to go close to the surface. It's actually a good amount of HP and armor for a boat list, which is a section of water has without a boat, and that's where you get some aviation. This will be the beginning of uh, the fast and high movement. But first comes the skip to the store, and I'm trying to fix it right here, because this oh, is super, oh. super just weird. I get a grenade. Uh oh, this will work. And we went <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> oh well. Ouch. But that's okay. That's all I want to show you guys. That if you put a grenade under the airboat, it goes crazy. Problem is, uh, that deals a bunch of damage. I would have to go pick up health and armor later on, and it uses a grenade. So we need the ammunition. Mm -hmm. Instead, I can just go ahead and climb up the wall, push this washing machine in. That's a washing machine, I think. Hop loader. Yeah, we'll go yeah, ahead and sit go, lift up the bridge, or lift up the bridge, and just five over normally. Go back a little reset. You can you get over some uh, some places with pretty insane movement with a boat. All right, this is called the, the, the I think boat skip. I'm gonna ram this boat after break every box in this box. All right, I think I break up oh, now. Sorry, guy. Ease it out here, and then ram myself into the wall. And nice. nice, first try. So things are a little bit different. They expect you to have a boat with a gun. Instead, I have a Gordon Freeman that can fly. So I have to make sure I don't die because there's a lot of uh, sections of toxic, uh, like toxic waste that will deal pretty continuous damage. So my goal is to get through here quickly and not take a bunch of damage. That boat skip skips a cutscene and also going to smooth faster than the boat anyways, so let's see how this goes. Nah, did I get up here? Not quite, that's all right. You wanna to go to a higher level, uh, but I can just go ahead and go through this kind of a little bit normally. A little bit more damaging and a little bit slower, but you roll with what you're dealt with. Uh-oh. A lot of times you're gonna kind of see him stop and stare at a point off in space or at a wall or something. Uh, He's trying to set up for the launches to make them as consistent as possible. There oh my go. goodness. <laughs> okay, land the uh, goop. Well, thank yeah, thankfully there's uh, a gas in water right there, so... Oh yeah, if you land in water... You don't take any fall damage from yep. landing in that. It can be the smallest puddle, but as long as there's water, or toxic waste, I guess, you're yeah. okay. Yeah. I think I get it. There's a nice little uh, boost you get here. If not, there's a backup straddle do. The ASH is a little bit awkward on uh, services like this, but you can go ahead and take nice. up there. And it's actually pretty good HP for Boatless. I'll still take a bit of damage from this guy. Also, my secret is I'm horribly inaccurate at FPSs. This applies to everything. If you're seeing my counter strike, I'm a pretty kill. Hey guys. Pick up some armor here for safety. And let's see if I can maintain movement. This is a very momentum-based section, so if you start going fast, uh, you can keep going fast. But you need to make sure you don't die, which is the crucial part of this. Oh. Lost my speed a bit, so I'll just be safe. Pick up the health back here. Very specifically around this corner, I'd say is when things get pretty, pretty ridiculous. Some missiles are coming; they might knock me back, which would be unfortunate, but I can deal with it. Ah, oh, completely stopped me. Okay. You pretty much gained massive speed at the drop of a hat here because of the slope surfaces. Which, when it comes to ABHing and ASHing, slopes are amazing. Oh. Or terrifying. <laughs> 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 so ABH is accelerated uh, back hopping and ASH is accelerated side hopping. This is the zombie tunnel. 
it, you take a lot of damage here, so it's good to be safe uh, with the saves. Uh, I might get picked up by a barnacle, or, or might take a bit of... Oh, hey, I hit the wall, so I stopped all my momentum. There we go. A lot of the movement, it's kind of changes Gordon's uh, positioning and facing, so it's hard. To, it's actually really hard to go in a straight line. Plus, the way I'm mashing on the uh, the scroll wheel makes this mouse very unstable. It's actually an issue I had uh, practicing for the run. I've never used uh, this mouse before because I'm always dumb and left my mouse at home. But it's got really good scroll wheel, but it's a little bit lighter than what I'm used to, so it's kind of hard to keep it steady. You can kind of maintain speed in uh, those toxic tunnels. But uh, it can be neither here nor there. Sometimes, sometimes it eats you up, sometimes it gives you speed. Now, coming up is, I believe this is the damn skip. We have two names for two uh, different jumps over. One of them isn't even a, a dam, but we call it the damn skip, or damn jump. So I'm trying to position here, and then angle here. And this is where you would fight the helicopter. Yes. Not no speed. Okay. I think the water's not good, but I think I can make this work if I don't die. All right, <laughs> let's roll. <laughs> I'd still die. No, we're good. Nice. That 9 HP, though. Yeah, 9 HP is pretty terrifying. But but okay. There's a long cutscene coming up. Yeah, there's a long, long cutscene coming up, and there's health packs pretty early on in the next section. Yeah. Actually, we have, we have pretty good time for a few donations. All right. We have a $250 donation from Dave Damn. Fry. Oh, I know that guy. That guy's awesome. Studio, it's David. Beat your record and we'll make you the first cognitive speedrunner. We'll donate again later in the run. Yeah, that's the owner of Cognitive Sports or Esports. A really cool, or Cognitive Gaming. I'm forgetting their name now and I feel bad about that. But uh, very cool dudes. We also have a $500 donation from Morton Svenvig. He says, held on to this donation for Studio's run. I've had a fantastic time so far. Love what you're doing here. Keep up the good work. Coming up is more teleports. This is a very long cutscene and there is some stuff to do in it, but this is kind of like the, the in-between point, the resting point in the game, and it gives you a lot of the plot background, a lot of the setup for future. Bossman's not a good person. But you get a few teleports, get to play with Dog for the first time, and I'll hopefully be able to go for a, a decent basketball shot. Teleports here actually don't matter because of Mossman's conversation. So she moved forward, but she has to finish talking anyways and kind of hold her hand out. And the most important thing about Mossman is she has a really weird stain on her back that I don't know how you would get. She keeps facing me, so I can't show it off. Wait, there it is. Like, back left shoulder. I don't know how you get that. I don't know how you get that. You don't want to know. Random note about the game and the, the costumes. You can tell Mossman's uh, outfit is actually very damaged, which is a pretty cool, just not twist, but design to go with because this is the post-apocalyptic future. New clothes is probably hard to come by, and the fact that her shirt's tear and tattered, no. It's not horrible, but she's still been living in a pretty bad situation. Brother, can I make a confession to my dad who's watching? When this game first came out, I faked being sick to stay home and play it, and I do not regret it at all. This <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. He made the right choice. Fighting the good fight. Okay, here we have our jars of supply. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the teleportation object coming up. There's actually lots of cool details here. Like if I look for that portrait for a long time uh, after this dialogue, Eli can tell me about his family. You can teleport the Vortigaunt. Also, Vortigaunts have weird holes in their butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an Alex. It's not an Alex. So Vortigaunt butts you can look at. Also, 
Doggy, doggy. This spot right here, I discovered it the hard way, um, will not trigger the next area. Uh, what happens is Alex is going to show up in the room, have some dialogue, have some conversation, and then you want to stand right here because Alex approaches you and she'll be closer to that keypad. So it says denied or error, but she'll be accepted. So because uh, that's where you want to stand, I once uh, got to this cutscene, went to the bathroom after uh, positioning myself there just to kill some time, and came back and wasted like four minutes because I'd gone to the bathroom instead of speed run, which uh, it was kind of worth it. 50-50. Quick reminder, there are a couple of prizes available during this run. A slow movement to pick it up. <laughs> See right there, there is an actual portal gun available. Look at this way. That's, oh, wait, no. Okay. That works. See, I was right. If you donate $15 between now and the end of Portal 2, you are entered in a chance to, to win that portal gun. Put on my cable. Also, if you, if you donate $5 before the end of this, uh, this run, you're entered, for, uh, you're entered for a chance to win a Half-Life poster or a head crab plushie. Take a look at this, Gordon. And if you donate $10 or more, you can, you can win a Gordon Freeman head vinyl decal. Must be look at this. It's very exciting. What's that? Oh, we've also got a, a really kick-ass statue of, uh, of it's Tychus from StarCraft II on a dead Hydralis. Oh, nice. And the box coming out. The big box is here. I carried that thing for a while. It's heavy. These are limited edition and very, very cool. We'd open it and show you, but it's probably a really bad idea. Yes, and, and that prize is a minimum donation of $50. But the cutoff, is, the cutoff for it is at the end of Antichamber. There's an off chance I won't be able to hear my grenades because uh, I can only hear some of the sound for some reason. So if that happens, that might be a problem, and it'll happen in Ravenholm. By the way, Ravenholm's super uh, bugged out and crushed. We get through there really quickly. Um, I think... Oh. Oh. Huh. Should we take a second to change it to stereo? Speakers. Huh. I don't know them. All right. I guess it's unpause now. Oh, by the way, this object's pretty cool. You want to flip it uh, or teleport with the backside. But if you drop it, it flips over naturally. So I see you've met Dr. Mothman. She's one of the main reasons I spend so much time outside. Coming up is possibly the worst hallway in the game for teleportation. Oh, it's so um, evil. I'm just going to go crazy and just try it non-stop because it's funny, but there's a chance that Alex will teleport to the other side of Gordon, but only on, on the side. Uh, there's a chance that Alex will just get blocked and stop and do nothing, and there's a chance she'll actually teleport forward. So we'll see what happens. It's just a fun hallway because if you actually get the teleport, it, it's a big time saver. If not, you just kind of stall her as you bonk her on the head a bunch. There you go, like stepping to the side. She can get under the vents. You can kind of see the... Whatever this is, get stuck. And oh, whoa. okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. We'll mention it. <laughs> also, keep in mind there are a couple of donation incentives coming up. The next game is Portal, and for that game, you can choose which category is played. Currently, out of bound, inbounds is beating out of bounds by about fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, I need that uh, dialogue to go properly. Uh, she has to be far enough along, or sure. once you leave that section, she will not uh, proceed as normal. And I can just pick up the gun and head on out, and she'll follow me. As getting up here uh, triggers something, or triggers her movement. Now, I'm gonna clean up the scrapyard. It's very messy, so we can go ahead, go to some of these barrels. Uh, these wooden planks or pallets can toss those two boxes. Everything's got to go. 
And what happens is, uh, I can manipulate Dog in a bit. Dog is the big old robot. We'll see him in a sec. He's pretty cool. But for this cu uh, cutscene, he'll want to play catch. And if I don't want to play, I have to make sure there's nothing else he can play with. Or he'll pick it up and toss it out. So we can go ahead and just kind of blow up all the stuff over here. There's a few uh, barrels over there, but we'll be there in a second. Here's Dog. He can murder you. Like, ten different places. Um, his hitbox is huge, and when he collides with you and your bio wallet, you die. You die very, very quickly. So, uh, not for a while, but in the future I'll actually have to kind of walk around and avoid him, or if not, he'll crush me unintentionally. Which, he's a dog. You know, he's a nice guy. He's useful. He'll let you finish the run, so... Do you guys think? Do you mm -hmm. guys think chat will spam Frank or Z's for a robot dog? I hope they can. I hope they will. Yeah. By the way, I'd, I'd highly recommend not putting sub chat on. We have to pick up these boxes. Dog gets happy. Um, these boxes are kind of funny too, in that they're weak boxes. You can tell because they're kind of damaged. <laughs> you got people to subscribe just to spam Frank or Z. Good job. I'm okay with that. I am I'm a Frank Rizzi supporter, free the dog. And now we can just very easily destroy the boxes. So for the end of this cutscene, dog has to be positioned by that trash can. So we'll go ahead and move that uh, to the sign. I could have killed myself there on accident, whoops. And you can block this with your body, and dog will eventually run and pick it up. I can, I can get a little bit closer. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. All right, all right. Wait, where'd it go? <laughs> that's, that's good. He's actually in a good position, though, so, all right. We can play catch with him. <laughs> or, um, if I don't do anything, he'll eventually just put his hand down, try and move, but there's nothing for him to pick up, so he'll sit there. <laughs> And that, like, that judder is him trying to find a way to do something. You can play catch here. You can not play catch. It doesn't really matter. Um, you just kind of have to wait for Alex to say something. Okay, there's a line of dialogue. So let's go for this. Okay. You can do it. I practice this, but I don't know if I have the dunk in me. Oh, no. Oh, too high, too high. Oh wait, what? Oh god, he found one of those. Oh, he got attracted by that. Okay. Actually, I actually couldn't get a line of, uh, of dialogue that Alex said, so I didn't know which cutscene or part of the cutscene we were at. So I kind of went for the shot a bit too early. Yeah. There, there's two lines. One is uh, get throw something heavy. The other is ah, oh, not too high. The other is, um, I, I, I believe it's, I didn't tell you who would do the catching. So, we're in the escape sequence of Black Mess East. Grab some paint cans. Oh, wait, no, go away you. Actually, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and the paint can's pretty cool, because I can do this. But, this is magical paint. Okay, in a second, we'll reveal true power. Thank you, dog. This is actually kind of like a, a cool little reminder of the old uh, visuals. That was white paint before, and if I shine my light on it, it's pure white. But now it's white, yellow, and orange. Uh, this is because it's supposed to be absorbing the light, but it just kind of freaks out and gets really cool streaks. Cutscene's almost over. We're almost there, guys. Okay. I guess open the door a bit more, and then I'll try and cut, crush Alex with debris. Rest in peace, Alex. You had a good run. And here is the coolest physics object in the game. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. This is the cord against the wall, and um, for whatever reason, you can just take it as long as you want through the wall as far as you want, and it's just, it just keeps going. You can't get it through this uh, hole, though, because it's actually a solid barrier. But I won't be taking it with me, because unfortunately, you don't move quickly with it. And we are finally done with Black Mesa East. OK, 
forgot. <laughs> and on to Ravenholm. One of the scariest levels, uh, pretty much in 2004, because out of nowhere this game became a horror game. I have 9 HP, so I have to be a little bit more careful. I might die, because I've never done this with 9 HP. We'll see how that goes. There's some zombies here. I have to hold this saw blade up high, or they'll knock it down. More zombies here. And you kill them to get a box for the starway. So make sure. There we go. Fit nice and perfectly. Can Adam climb up here? And safety quick save. Because I have a nasty habit of blowing myself to death. Using the gravity gun, we can now do some cool boosting. And this is actually a very hard, hard item climb. And the barrel can very easily lose position. I have to kind of back on out because of that little uh, drain pipe right there. But I made it through. Okay, that, that's good, a huge chunk of Raven home right there. There's a head crab. He's dead. Here's some health packs. It's actually quite a bit of health. Uh, three health packs is a lot to be kind of contained there. But this, this game is very nice uh, when it comes to safety healing. By the way, a lot of this movement is very easy to fall off. Like, that jump is uh, pretty reliable in terms of falling off the last second because there's an invisible box you have to jump over as you do that jump. It's a low on HP, but that's okay. So this is a section I really need a grenade in. I need to be able to hear the grenade. Oops. Okay, I have to... I have to get this bag. You too. Okay. This bottom climb is a little bit difficult at the beginning because it's a very narrow wall you're climbing on. But you get high up, you're okay. So if I can't hear the grenade, I'm actually going to have to use a different strategy. Okay. Oh god, I can hear it for like a second. So, I'll probably just go for, whoa. Oh, whoops, I quit saving the wrong spot. So I'll just have to go ahead and, I'll try it one more time. Oh, it's almost there, it's almost there. I can feel, I can, I'll have to, I have an idea. No, not quite. The thing with this trick is what I'm supposed to do is use a grenade to rebound off the ceiling. But the timing's relatively tight. And I'm, I would land over that fence, but without being able to hear the grenade timing, it's incredibly difficult to uh, get that trick. So instead I can just kind of try and do an old trick. This was an old route change, I believe the grenade jump. I think that was OBC, Obtained Video Code, who brought that to light and RTA runs. Uh, instead you can just kind of navigate here through the side. I have to do a jump that I haven't done in a while. Um, you have to uh, wait for a little elevator, and it's very slow, but because of how we came here, this area is not really loaded in properly. And now it's a little bit short. There's Father Grigori. Thank you. And over the fence. And that skips the first map of two maps that we skip in this run. Now, we don't have Father Gory too, so we're gonna have to, instead of waiting for him to fight zombies and use a bunch of fire and all that jazz, we're just gonna grenade uh, launch over one of these walls. Uh, something to note is that Gordon Freeman, when he have, has sprinted, pretty much has ice physics. Like, it's actually ridiculous uh, how much he moves, so it's very dangerous to uh, sprint up certain surfaces, because he'll ramp off of it, which is cool sometimes, but that, uh, a little part of the graveyard, I could have ramped into a bad spot. And actually, we'll probably ramp a bit here. So this is the end of Ravenholm, going down to the mines. Mines aren't too pleasant. But luckily, if you know where you're going, just kind of run and throw your face at stuff. Oops, there's ramping. A lot of headcrabs here, but unlike Half-Life, their hitbox isn't gigantic. So they're relatively easy to deal with. Those guys, if they hit me, I just bounced off a head crab, will uh, take you down to one HP. And I have a chance of drowning, so that's very dangerous. Oh. So up here is a very odd section to ABH in. 
because if I go to the side, I'll kind of slide up rather than jump up, but you maintain speed, so hey, roll with it. I believe in the uh, segmented run, they actually do a ramp and uh, end up on the out of bounds section. That's not consistent. The segmented run of this is amazing, by the way, and there's a bunch of source runners behind me that you know, help make the run and you know, help build the source community, so it's cool to have them. And they help make pretty much what is a solid guide for some RK strats. So we're gonna pick up the shotgun in a bit. The shotgun is amazing for combat. Well, one shot most combine soldiers. Uh, I want to be close enough, and um, quite often want to kill combines every now and then. Winston's been hit. That shotgun you picked up, I believe, is the last point in the game where you can get a shotgun, right? Uh, you can still pick some off enemies, but I believe that's the last drop for quite some time. Oh, you can pick up Kleiner's gun, which um, is funny. So that's like so you can be jerk to Kleiner. That's like way, way later. Yeah. Like for the next uh, foreseeable future. That's like one of the few last shotguns. So we're about to hit Coast. Coast is the most open area in the game. And it's a fantastic piece of gameplay, especially for the speed run. Um, we'll see how it goes. There's one trick that I, I haven't been able to get consistently. It has to do with some weird mouse issues. Let's get a box here to block in that NPC. Or he'll try and run. You'll see him move in a second. Like when he does like this jolt, that's him trying to run back to the door. Oh, he actually did it. Cool. But there's a chance he'll try and run away, which uh, wastes a bunch of time because you have to wait for him to reach a door. I can load some ammo right now, get more HP, get more armor. I can also trash the place. Throw tires everywhere, be just a huge jerk. This is the story of a guy named Gordon Freeman who is mute. Uh, sticks his butt out as he flies across uh, all of the land, and then just kind of hits people with stuff as he wrecks their place. I like the plot, actually. Oh, random thing is that these shards of wood from the boxes are one of the best items in the game to uh, do teleports with. They're kind of oddly shaped, but for some reason that shape is perfect for just messing with NPCs' hitboxes. Okay, Alex, we're all set. And there's a trick I haven't explained too much of called, uh, I think it's collision boosting is the exact name. Pretty much if I hit a surface, or a slope surface, and I have high speed, it's treated as a ramp more or less. Gordon will kind of physics up it and can do some crazy stuff. Uh, solid, just straight walls will not work that well, but um, if you have something with any sort of slant, it can be quite effective. That's actually a really good teleport to get. Saves quite a bit of time as he's, st he's still talking. Car's all ready for you. Nope. Ooh. A little bit too much damage taken, but luckily I'll be able to heal that back up. And got a good boost over the slope. So there's a lot of slope services here that are kind of weird, kind of crazy. Whoa, Gordon, <laughs> Gordon, no! I do not have enough HP um, to safely do the next few sections, so I'll have to heal back up. It's possible I'll take no damage, but it's also possible I'll take a lot more than that. So marathon safe. Uh, this, I don't know if this trick will work. This is one that's been kind of problematic, but it might, might have been a different PC, probably the issue. So you can actually move a bit while loading screens come up. So I'm gonna try and get some good movement, good speed, while this loading screen comes up. The issue I'm having is, uh, I've been having is that sometimes I can't actually move Gordon uh, in the right direction at all, like it's capping his uh, movement for a bit. So just in case, I'll have to, I have a safety strat. Gordon, no. There you go. No. Oh. Bit, bit off to the side. But I think you're getting the general idea of what's about to happen. This is... All right. Yes. yes. I'll take it. Nice. Uh-oh. Gordon, no. Gordon, no. That's okay. So it's actually faster to load the autosave here and cross the ocean again uh, if you have good speed rather than... Whoa. It didn't save my, sp my input. You can bounce on water holding uh, jump, but I think I held jump during the loading screen and it didn't save the input. But it's uh, safer and faster to go just from this opposite side for this jump. 
And now the goal is to minimize fall damage and just get places fast. Um, I'm moving fast enough where even though I'm not like going off huge drops, the slopes of these, uh, or the slants of these hills is enough to take fall damage. For safety, there's a bunch of armor here. I'm at 100-100. I will take a lot of explosion damage from myself specifically, so that, that'll be useful. Uh, I'll take the safe route here just because there's like a 90% chance Garden will just kind of fling himself into space if you go up this hill. And it's it's way too high. Like, I love going up this hill, but Gordon just tends to kill himself, which is unfortunate. Oh, I need to pick up that rocket launcher. Oh, you can cover that one. Yeah, you need to grab the rocket launcher here because there's no other real way to kill the airships up ahead. Uh, so you basically render the game, for all intents and purposes, uncompletable if you don't pick that up. You could technically use SMG grenades and explosive barrels, but good luck with that. Nice. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Gotta land, gotta land. We're good. Yes! Nice. So pretty much all of Coast can kill you if you mess up any trick. Um, there's a good chance that I could either put a rock right there and ramp either to an amazing spot or a terrible spot. Oops. Stop that. This is an interesting surface because, as far as I can tell, no one has a good reliable setup for getting up here. So, I'm just trying to get a little bit of speed to... Ah, oh, not quite. Let's see, wait on. Let's change its positioning a bit. But, like, with that surface, I can bounce up and do that. There you go. And here comes, I think, what, what is a very cool trick, and it'll actually be very hard for me uh, with this mouse. Because if I even this out as much as possible, it be very precise. And if I don't move the mouse, this one's kind of light, so it's a little bit tricky. I can bounce up and land over here. Nice. Which skips um, the entire map. You normally have to go under the bridge. And we can hear that pleasant train sound. Yeah. So that's, that's actually the end of Highway 17. Um, we saw our, yeah, Highway 17, the section. Uh, we saw a little bit more beach maps, though, so lots of open space still. Grab a safety hill. Uh, I'm going to do a boost here that is incredibly unreliable and I'll probably die. But there's an auto save right before, so hey, we're good. Who knows where I'll go? Um, all right, I died. But uh, that's probably going to happen there. Luckily, the auto save keeps you alive. I can hear Niglaria, Niglaria all the way over here. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Gotta find more positioning here. Get a little bit far to the right. It's kind of the same thing as before, where I have to make sure my mouse is completely straight. This is gonna be a little bit. Oh, oh. Yeah. No. Um. Oh, oh, whoops, I forgot the auto save loads that. <laughs> And the thing is, if you load there, um, because you're already in flight and loading's already moved a bit, you're not going to get that. This should be good for a different positioning. There we go. Bounce, bounce. Nice. Gordon Freeman. <laughs> nice and safe. There's like three different setups for this next map. Um, two involve SMG boosts. I like the, uh, just jump up here. For some reason, I only do good uh, grenade jumps if I spaz out right before by just moving my hand really quickly. Uh, not quite. Let's see. There, there you go. go. That's the right level of spazzing. And I have to get to a loading point. Uh, normally, you fight a bunch of combine soldiers here. They open the door to the lighthouse. Let you in, it's all nice and fancy, lots of combat, but that takes a while and we'd have to wait for NPCs, which is like the worst thing. So instead you can kind of hold the wall right here, uh, you minimize your fall damage and enter a loading zone, which will load the next part of the map. So turn right back around as soon as it finishes, and we're going to meet the rudest NPC in the entire game. That's a jerk. I, I don't think anybody here can hear it, but... Um, chat should realize how big a jerk that guy is. Okay. 
I'm taking damage here. It's okay. Uh, this might be less okay. There we go. Those are the antlions. Um, we've seen them a bit. They're kind of annoying. They can actually spawn in front of me. But they'll be a little bit useful later on. As will actually be our allies. There's a few different setups here. Get Adam Climb uh, with those boxes up here. Use a grenade here to uh, jump onto an invisible wall. Or you can uh, ride the ceiling. Or ride up like a weird slope. Now, here I have to go a little bit slower, because if you sprint, you'll probably run off. So safety first, guys. If you fall down on the inside of that area, you're pretty much stuck. Yeah. Area um, where he was being careful. You either die, or you soft block and you're stuck in position, because you're actually in the roof of this section. This is supposed to be a transition from day to night, so I believe they don't want you to see the uh, sky. Also, I'm moving really fast, but it's hard to tell. Let's see if I can get a good fall here. I want to try and land in a roof. It's a bit risky to go with 8 HP, but it's risky to go with 4. If I don't get a good fall, I'll just go ahead and roll with like something like 10. I'm trying to like cling to part of the wall right here, but I can be a bit unreliable. There we go. And 42 HP is okay. I'll pick up some health packs in a bit. And that skips the pheromone pod, the whole map skips the pheromone pod and the battle with the antlion guard. What's nice is I still have friendly antlions, which will actually be a hindrance in a bit, but for the most part is nice. Yeah, they can really get in, in, in your way. Yeah. So you clearly can see. <laughs> they can. They're friendly guys, though. We might have to kill a few, though. We'll, we'll, we actually will kill a few for sure. They will not survive the upcoming violence. So, for safety, I'm going to kill these guys. They'll chuck grenades at me, and I need really good positioning for a trip coming up. And increase safety health and safety armor. Bring us to 99 and 43. So, I have to find the weird white speck next to the white, or giant white specks. And position here. I'm just going to be safe. Okay, no one behind me. An airline can be behind you. Okay, that's actually really hard to hear. Let's see if I got it. Nah. So I can't hear the grenade well. I think it's good. Nice. Can I survive? Yes. Oh. And here is my favorite zombie in the entire game. I'm going to waste a second just to watch him die. <laughs> he just goes. Right. Enough of that guy. Suicidal zombies. So upcoming is, or coming up is Nova Prospect. I really like Nova Prospect as a map. It's, this is probably the most action-y of the action uh, maps. And it's very chaotic, very dangerous, very crazy. Uh, lots of cool tech here. I have to get in there first, though. And to do that, I'm going to have to kill two gunships. And which, this is why I have the uh, bazooka. Well, not for these guys. They're just in the way. But uh, to take out the gunship safely. I actually have to clear out a bunch of guards here, though, because for RKA attempts, they will probably kill me. Just because um, they're on turrets that do a lot of damage. So it's good to be safe here. And I got some bad RNG. Our guard wasn't uh, at the right post. So let's see if I can go ahead and not get shot too hard. I'm being shot really hard. Okay, cool. Antlines helped out. Antlines killed one of the guards at the side. It's good. I'm scrolling the missile around because the uh, gunship will target it down. So I have to be very cautious about how I hit it. One gunship down. Guys being a jerk. Second gunship's about to spawn. Oh, you got it. It's kind of hard to get that first shot on him because he will, uh... Oh. <laughs> Whoops. He will, uh, go ahead and... Knock a, or he'll he'll be so far away that the missile can be despawn. By the way, it's actually a really good AI on the gunship. So it'll target barrels that are near Gordon. And I'm gonna go ahead pick up a safety help, just because Nova Prospect involves a lot of damage. And better to be a, a live Gordon than a dead Gordon. Here's some fire. You can turn it off, but we're men. This door is triggered on a timer. Once the loading screen comes, I can open it up. So until then, I can kick back and relax.
So, there's a trick coming up that is used once in the entire run, but it's got the coolest name and it's actually got a really cool uh, basis. Zimbabwe, could you explain a Schrodinger's Crouch? Sure. All right, so uh, Schrodinger's Crouch or Quantum Crouching, either one. Um, basically, when you crouch in this game, you go through an animation, and you can interrupt that animation uh, by letting go of crouch or by crouching again. So what you do is you crouch, let go of crouch, and re-crouch, and you're in a sort of state where your hitbox is small, but your camera is still positioned where your head would be. So you can use that to peek through ceilings. We'll be in a state of crouching and not crouching, and the only way to check will actually destroy the crouch. So, we'll we use it once, we use it to press a button, it actually saves a decent amount of time. Ow. And I have to be fast about this, because if not, these guards and manhacks will shoot me up. So position the barrel here, position the barrel here. Pick up the manhacks. All right, so crouch, uncrouch. Actually, I actually don't think I got it. There we go. There you go. Nice. And timer's a bit off now, so... Wait, I think all the guards already came out. Cool. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I went oh. the wrong way. Oh. <laughs> you got me. All right. Props to him. Okay. I'm actually going to do a safety save. It's very low HP for this section. And I'm going to go ahead and just shoot this guy from over here. Just, uh, I can get a grenade. Okay. If I'd made the jump to get over it, I would have been okay, but unfortunately I made that mistake. But it's okay. Wait. I want all the health I can get for this section. I don't use a whole lot of, uh, of the health stations or armor stations. But this is one I'll use just because um, it makes it, this section incredibly reliable. Uh, I, I should give shout to Gokmak uh, because he is currently the current world record holder and an amazing runner. Actually, all, all the source crews were cool. Uh, Lloyd, Gokmak, uh, Toxabuse, who made the Unpack, which is the version of the game I'm playing. But uh, Gokmak has a lot of cool side strats that when he gets them, will save about a few seconds, but he misses them to take up a ton of time. But he always goes for them, and that's why he's able to go ahead and maintain the record, because he's gone balls out every single run for, you know, the past few months when he's been arcading the game. But most rooms have a different uh, solution. For example, in that room where I uh, climbed up with a chair, he just boosts off a uh, desk, but it's not reliable. Should I'm going to actually say that you should follow twitch.tv slash gocknack, G-O-C-N-A-K, because that dude is awesome. And has put in a ridiculous amount of time on this game. So coming up is the worst chapter in the entire game. A lot of cutscenes, a lot of waiting around, a lot of chance to go ahead and explore some art. I was messing around with this. Um, theoretically, I can use this table right here to uh, set up a cool boost if it lands in the right spot. Wait for it. Uh, almost. Actually, that should work. Cool. Hey -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's dumb and pointless because it, it takes a second longer to uh, wait for it to land, but I like it. I just like that idea. And welcome to Entanglement. This is a very Alex-centered uh, chapter, which is not a good thing. NPCs are not to be trusted. Uh, do we have time for some donations? We have. Oh, we have time for some donations. There's some talking to be done. We got $150 from Henning Stormer. We have $100 from an anonymous donor. Here's to my uncle who lost his life to brain cancer, and I don't want anyone else to lose anyone to brain cancer. So cancer is weak, and let's make cancer weak. Donation's the answer. $100 from Malthus X. Dedicating this donation to my colleague and friend Abel, who has beaten cancer and is alive today due to early detection. Much love to all the runners and viewers. Put this donation to whatever studio wants in honor of him finally cutting his hair. 
We also have $100 from Andreas Behrman. Hi, EGDQ. Been watching since CG. It's been great to see EGDQ evolve as it has. Here's to a future of less cancer and more speed running. All right, so Entrapment has a lot of cutscenes. This is the most uh, cutscene-centered place of the run. And the issue is that there's not a way to skip a lot of cutscenes, or there is, but you still have to do some sort of waiting. Um, for example, here Alex has to find Eli, find her dad, find out what's up with him, and we're going to start the search for Eli. But fortunately, there's a door, and if that door was there, or that force field, I could get through, shoot some guys, and we could be on our merry way. But because Alex is going to go ahead and be the only person that can open a door, we're kind of stuck. There are a few uh, bits of very specific combat, like you come in with you can come in with about 10 HP, and it's actually very difficult because you risk dying very easily. Mm -hmm. Also, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left. The um, soldiers with red eyes are very important to kill fast because they have shotguns that deal very high damage and shred through armor. Wanted to point out that line, hot done, watching Gok Max stream segment attempts for 12 hours, listening to hot done, reload, <laughs> hot done, over and over again. <laughs> yeah, this must have been the worst of all things to a segment, just because constant Alex. Uh, coming up is a trick called a trick called Fast Alex. Um, the setup is you wait for Alex to finish talking and then wait two seconds, and then there's like a 50-50 chance to walk to the next objective quickly. Um, you can't tell because you have to walk away from her, and you're in a dark room alone. It's very scary and very isolated. She'll follow you. Actually, this will be a good time to talk about the segmented run, because we haven't really gone into depth of what it actually is. I want so, the couch handle that. Yeah, uh, we're from Source Runs here in the couch, most of us, yeah. Um, and we worked for like almost three years, I yeah. think it was, on a run called Dwarm Mob, done with a high magnitude of velocity of Half-Life 2. And as you may understand by yourself from watching this run, there's a big difference between a segmented run and a single segment run of Half-Life 2, since, well, you can save anywhere you want and just reload and, and segment a lot. So, yeah, there's a lot of difference. You can use your boost and the uh, ABH speed to gain crazy launches, especially in coast. Yeah. So to compare, like, uh, the single segment to the segmented run, uh, the single segment world record now is, like, an hour and 53 minutes on easy difficulty, and the segmented run is under an hour 30 on hard. So <laughs> segmenting this game completely breaks everything. I mean, you can just do it absolutely perfectly. So if you're interested in checking that out after this run, uh, do a YouTube search for... Half Either Source two. Runs or... Yeah, Source Runs, you can find it on the Source Runs YouTube channel. That's the easiest way to do it. To give them more credit, like, wait, wait, one, two. All right, set up. To give them even more credit, um, they put in hours and hours into each individual segment, and it's just, it's a, amazing what the run looks like now. So you, I would highly recommend checking it out, just because it is a fantastic sight to behold. Throw a grenade here to blow up. Ah, oh, I missed it. Okay, that was just <laughs> there, we there we go. Trying to blow up the uh, shelves over there because I need to proceed through that vent. And we got slow, Alex, unfortunately. <coughs> so eventually Alex will show up on this TV screen. This is actually a really unfortunate part of the game for me because I didn't know what the hell to do when I first played this. And I just like went to this room, explored all the other rooms. I, was wonder I wonder why the game locked me into a tiny space for such a long time. Now, once this door opens, um, there's a bunch of combat, and it's actually very scary at low HP. Uh, luckily, I have, I have a decent amount, so it won't be too risky, but it's very possible just to get destroyed, because there's a lot of soldiers. Luckily, there's a few ways to uh, go ahead and deal with a lot of them, but it's also very easy to be swarmed and just murdered. There's also an explosive mine right there. Now, there's not a lot of them, like, uh, unlike Half-Life 1, which has like the whole trip mine section, but there's the one appearance. Actually, I think it's like one of I, like three or something. Those do not appear very often. But let's go ahead and set ourselves up to kill a bunch of soldiers. So look at the monitor. 
They're soldiers. And here they are. So you blow up these guys, you use this fancy weapon on them, and then you blow up uh, those guys and also unlock the uh, force field. But if you have, you know, 20, 30 HP and no armor, then those guys will just very quickly murder you. And I don't know why I'm using this gun, because it's not very good for the situation. So this is a long waiting point in the game. We're going to skip it, though. Normally you set up turrets and you kill a bunch of bad guys, and then you feel good because you're all dead, but instead of do doing that, we can just go ahead and climb over the wall. There's also grenade boost you can do. I actually have enough HP for grenade boost, but just out of habit, I went for the safe strat. And those are tricky to set up uh, ABH. David Fried chipped in again. One hour mark. Hello again, studio. We're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was for $500. Ooh, nice. Are you going to be drawing? Studio? Yes. I think I'm thinking I'm going for a Frank or Z. Oh, God. We'll see. That's a good idea. So for safety sake, I'm gonna kill these guards. I've had issues where those guards don't die, and it really delays this section. But this is a unfortunate section, I'd say, of the run, because the fastest way to deal with this and the safest way is to go ahead and cower in the corner. He grabbed all those turrets because uh the enemies won't spawn if you don't move them. The game waits kindly for you to set them up. So he just sets them up right where they yeah. are. And now I'm in this perfect position where I can just sit and do nothing. Fortunately, that's not very interesting. So I'm going to try and draw Frank or Z from memory. I'm sorry. Can you pull it up on your phone? Reference? All right. Um, actually, my phone's terrible. Does someone have Well, Frank the chat is spamming it. You can just. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Pass it. Chat keeps spamming Frank or Z. I need to see the dog. <laughs> Chat, spam right. Frank or Z, we need it for reference. <laughs> okay. So let's see. All right. <laughs> Put the outline first. Okay. Dips a little bit here. Oh, out of flashlight. All right, get away, get away. Actually, um, UA, can you tell me if Alex says stuff? Like, has she said anything? I heard, sir, I heard her say something a second ago. Can you tell, can you tell me when she says, um, we've hit the mother load? It's because, um... I don't understand why you can't hear it, because it's coming through. Because I just realized, um, there's audio cues here, but I can hear them. And, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I can spend a lot of extra time here. Wait, right, now that left eye's <laughs> a little bit iffy. All right. We'll go pistol for the delicate lines. I guess all that's left is a nose? Yeah, all right, let's do this. Okay, so I give you Frank Trizzi. <laughs> Done in half life, too. Here you go. Thank you. What happens here is there's a bunch of soldiers, but they're not spawning, and they're just doing their thing. And eventually, after enough time, Alex is like, all right, I'm going to head down there. We're good. Actually, when Alex says that, I would also like a warning, just because, I don't know. I don't know why we can't hear her. But this is one of the few, I'd say, like audio-only sections of the game. But essentially, I'm saving a lot of damage and a lot of time dealing with those guards by just cowering here. And it's faster. It's just not very, not very hyped. But, I mean, we got this. It's not... Hmm? Soldiers coming in from everywhere. All right, no, no, we're cool. all right. We're good. We're good. Still got some more time here. This is actually kind of the worst part about Half Life Two as a grinding speed run. There's a lot of cutscenes, like a lot of cutscenes. I think it's cool to see what happens in them, you know, time after time, or for the first time, because they're pretty crazy when you manipulate them with the teleports. But man, hearing Alex talk about the mother of soldiers for like the 40th, 50th, 100th, thousandth time, not very exciting. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll take a selfie with Frank or Z. God. You know how much you like Let's go ahead. Oh yeah, I need the flashlight in the right position. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna, go, gonna knock something down when I do this. Okay, Gordon, I'm gonna leave off here and catch up with you. Be 
<laughs> I'm going to leave off here and catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> and Alex is here. This is awesome games done quick where we do speed runs of <laughs> selfies with Frank or Z. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex is talking. She's doing a bunch of stuff. Um, it'd be nice to move this box out of her way. We have some time to pick up some ammunition, pick up some armor, Field get more SMG grenades. So I actually have to wait for Alex here anyways, so it's not a huge deal uh, to go slowly. The problem Alex has is, during this loading screen, she's going to get stuck. I have to shoot her. There we go. The thing is, if you can't shoot her, you can't see that you have to go ahead and move her. Or if you don't see her, you can't shoot her. Alright. So just got to clear a bunch of soldiers out. Give me a couple left. Be the last guy. Hey, wait. There we go. Alex sometimes runs off to the side. I don't know what she's doing. I don't think she knows what she's doing right now. I don't know why she's behind the boxes. There's no, nothing back there. There's not even a guard spawn. And I'm gonna stand in this room at this spot. If uh, I go too far forward, it actually leaves the trigger zone. And she'll just stand in this doorway for a bit. When I say entanglement, it has a lot of cutscenes. I really mean it has a lot of cutscenes. Um, she now has to go ahead, we find out that, well actually no, we've already found out that Mossman is evil. Now we're going to find out or capture her and pin her down and things won't go wrong, I promise. Come on, Gordon. Nice waiting. At this point you can do stuff like move around tables, use them to block guards. Um, there's a bunch of useless teleports in here if I break a table. And it's, just, it's a pain to break them. They're very durable. Also I'm being shot at, but it's not a big deal. Also, for some reason, I can very clearly hear, clearly hear all the soldier audio. Now, during this cutscene, all you can really do is do stuff like hop here and hop on Alex's head. We know all about you and Green. You've been a spy for the Combine the whole time. Damn it. If you hop on this console, and then hop on Mossman's head, when Alex and Mossman are next to each other, they're actually like one solid block. So you can kind of stand in between them, because their hitboxes just kind of combine that way. There he goes, the one. So now I can just kind of like walk between them. Oh, luckily they're the exact same height. I'm sorry for the profanity. Uh, we have some time for a few more donations. First, quick reminder that coming up, after, uh, coming up next after this run is Portal, and you can donate for which uh, which category is played. Currently, inbounds is beating out of bounds by a pretty a pretty nice margin. Okay, something good's about to happen. Wait a second. There we go. That's not supposed to happen. So Alex will close the door and. Oh, that was weird. She normally will walk through it for some reason. So this time she decided not to do that and actually kind of equaled out in time. Because you'll have to wait for her to teleport. So a common bug didn't happen. But yeah, Alex is a bit buggy with that doorway. So this is the teleporter sequence. Eli's going to be carted in in a second on one of the Citadel transport pods. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of see the twist. It's another turret session coming up. This time we can't just uh, hide in a corner and draw stuff. I mean, we could still draw things, actually. But I don't know if the Franker Z can ever be beaten, so let's not go that way. But what's going to happen is I'm going to try and stop the guard spawns by hiding in a corner. And it will cause all the guards to kind of get built up in one position, and they won't be able to move past each other. So if you make it through, but not a whole bunch. There's also a great way to soft block the game right here. This teleport is going to raise up. And when it raises up, uh, NPCs can actually enter this area. Right now I can't walk in here. 
If an NPC, let's say Alex, enters that area, she can't get pushed out. You can't do anything to move her, and she, her AI won't have her move. So the ele elevator will slowly come down and eventually crush her through the floor. She doesn't die, but the game is entirely soft locked, and I want to blow at that point. And it's after a very long cutscene, so that's a full warning if that does happen, which I'll do whatever I can to prevent it. Um, I might have to do some things. What's the time at, by the way? Uh, about 1.30. Alright. Doing okay. I'm gonna math up my head like what my final time will be. If I proceed at this pace. Also coming up is City 17, which is... Kind of a, a nice combination of open space and lots of heavy combat. There will be lots of times to go fast, lots of times to shoot dudes and run and gun. Oh, so we have a set, set up the turrets here, but it doesn't actually matter to set them up. Uh, guards are on the timer based off the doors being blown in. I'll set up the turrets now as a just in case. It'll actually affect the spawns and some will make it through, but it's not a huge deal. The big goal is to make sure that not all of them make it through, or some of them do. It actually is really not a hard section no matter what. That turret's gone, but these turrets will auto-revive if you pick them up. They're indestructible for our sake. And what can happen here is I'll just tower and hide. And some guards should make it through. I'll kind of watch that turret, make sure Alex doesn't do anything crazy, like go in there um, as, as a safety measure. No. <coughs> Do everything myself. I guess the difference between here and uh, a hard run would be in hard. You have to make sure to, to stop the enemy spawns. I don't know if it's better or worse. Oh, grenade. Um, so interesting little fact here. These are this is bulletproof glass, except this one. For some reason, you can shoot through this glass. You can actually see they've taken shots at Alex from here. I can shoot at that guy. Take him down from the side. It's an odd, just random bit of, I guess, non-bulletproof glass. I can position Alex also to be by the console she needs to be at in order to finish the teleport. When you, like, push into her, she'll move. And also, I guess I'll body block, make sure. All right, we're protecting the, te the teleporter. She can't get crushed now. That's right, you. We have some time for a few more donations, as right now it's just kind of watching this. Alright, another PSA. Um, coming yep. up later this morning is Borderlands 2, and there are a few, there are a few choices you can make, one of which is which language the game is when it's played. And this is a close one Yo, right now. Currently Japanese is in the lead with $8,482, but French is right behind at $8,110. And with this incentive, we have to cut this off about an hour before the run starts. God. Okay, we're done. Okay. So, you have time, but don't wait too long on that one. You can also donate for, uh, for the runners to do the Face McShooty side quest. Currently, that has $715 Azure, out of the 4000 required. And there's also Space Program, which currently has 425 out of the $1,000 that the game needs to be played. Spoiler, Space Program is awesome. I apologize for literally this wrong LGBTQ. So, here is four Elite Combine Soldiers. They're focusing on the turret, but because it's behind that glass, they're not going to fire at it. They'll just kind of get stuck. Sometimes they'll die. Oh, there, one went down. And we're teleported out of there into another cutscene. This game, this game kind of bundled them all together. Whoa, the graphic gun looked weird. Oh my God, we made it. Let's see if I can show some stuff off. But where's Dr. Crane? Hmm. With different uh, resolutions, you can see random uh, like things Dr. about Gordon's Crane hand. For example, I think if I had a little, uh, different resolution or different monitor, I could, you can see some weird physics on Gordon's hand. Not quite available right now. My God. 
At least we were it's on my end. Also, Clanner has a shotgun. He's, he's using it to protect himself, but I can just go ahead, shoot it as a shotgun with a gravity gun, or just take it myself, and he has no defense now. Because I'm just, I'm just that kind of guy. Gordon Freeman is a very mean person. There's a health tech here. I know what you guys are wondering. The cactus is in here. You know, if you really want to see Gordon's hands, you could always change the view model FOV to like 270. God. We should, we, I should have done this uh, third person lowest settings, which is the best race category. Oh, this is actually a really good racing game because most of the source runners get together and just BS in a Skype chat, which leads to exciting things happening like playing car horns for about 40 minutes in a Skype call, <laughs> which out of context sounds pretty bad, but. I guess that's how you had to be in a moment. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's a pretty good night. Like five people out there are really happy that I mentioned that. <laughs> so this is actually a hmm? This is a really bad place for dog. I can murder you like three different spots here. Um, if I'm by this doorway, when it opens up, uh, dog will crush me. If I'm by a car, when dog picks it up, dog will crush me. I think he can also crush me at a third doorway, so pretty much any time dog is near a door, just stay away. It's not worth it. But he's adorable, look how he's sitting. I, I actually really like dog as a character, just wish he wouldn't kill me so much. So positioning here can be a bit weird. You can actually force Alex to teleport herself on dog, and she'll clip into him and it messes up the hitbox. She's approaching me right now for dialogue, but Dog also backs up, so it's a bit of a weird, janky situation. It's actually really good positioning for me to teleport her normally. It's when she walks into Dog that stuff gets kind of weird. Ah, nothing, but it balanced on her head for a bit, and that could have killed me. I'll quick save here, because if you don't jump uh, through the, the little area, the elevator shaft, you will actually softlock the game, because Gordon Freeman gets stuck on nothing, but he can't move and you're just stuck there forever. So when I bonk Dog with the uh, crate, it actually forces him to chase me for a bit, and he gets closer to this car, which we're about to see Dog in action. So there's bad guys. Here's an empty man. Yeah! And it, there's actually really funny AI right here. Dog's gonna throw a, uh, a vehicle into that uh, window, and you can see the soldier will move forward and then back up because you need to make sure that they're still in range. And sometimes they'll just back up on the ground. They'll also fire at me, but it's not really a big deal. Like, that guy moves out. So they'll just kind of like move forward and then just decide, wait, maybe I should be in a safe position. And. There we go. There's an inconsistent teleport I can get here if I just put this in Dog's back. I think it's the only Dog teleport in the game. So he's gonna look at me once. Then turn around, then it's kind of... Damn it. There we go. Nice. It's actually really inconsistent. God, I feel like that could have killed me. And now we're in fun zone again. Back to doing stuff. So this is um, one of the first places you see in the game. Uh, around the train station, not the train station itself. But now we have the HEV suit and guns. And there are bad guys that shoot, so a little bit different. I want to try to get enough speed here to boost up on some debris. If not, I can use a grenade jump. Yeah. I'm just going to quick save for just in case. Because just in case. Because <laughs> uh, I use a grenade, it's, I can't waste the ammunition or the health. Um, there's a lot of damage to take here. I'm going to use a boost with a gravity gun. You can, you can boost yourself off uh, just most objects with a gravity gun. The question is, will you get enough height? Uh, boosting with the gravity gun is really fun, by the way. It's just all about knowing how to set it up and how the momentum will carry. And like, if you, you can be moving forward and all that. So the, the spider mines are pretty vicious. There's a chance uh, they will destroy me if I get unlucky. Ow. Um, it's really moving close and how they move. That can be the issue. So I need to boost myself with another grenade. I'm going to be low on HP, but there's a bunch of health pickups I can uh, use for safety's sake. Okay, this one has to be relatively perfect. Nah. Okay, I'll do it less fast. Mo mo uh, movement. There we go. 
kind of skip some stuff by jumping around there. Holder here. Spider Man here. You can pick them up with a gravity gun and use them versus enemies. And some safety armor and health. From the Spider Man damage, and because I also uh, use two rescue two grenades. So I have to be very, very careful um, about taking too much damage, like I said. There's also a few uh, glitchy seconds coming up where I won't have access to uh, quick saves or the gravity gun, or else it has a really high chance of crashing the game. Also in the bottom right, you can see that I have a squad. They don't do anything. One guy might actually show up and uh, help me out for a few seconds, but he'll probably die. And if not, he'll uh, die afterwards. This is actually kind of like a, a random part of the game. I like the mechanic, but for a speedrun... You just can't rely on uh, NPC soldiers. You can't rely on the NPCs, so... Soldiers to deal damage aren't reliable either. So I have to get through this little hole in the wall. Gordon Freeman? And uh, now that he's seen me, he'll trigger and start activating some charges. So if I use a gravity gun here, the game will probably crash. And if a quick save here to show off using the gravity gun here, the game will probably crash. So... No gravity gun, no quick save. Luckily it's not too tough of an area. Uh, if you kill the first few soldiers, most of them get stuck in the back. There's some health and armor here, so I'll just pick that up. And manhanks will just kind of trickle at me one by one. So it's like a nice little shooting gallery feel. We have time for a couple donations. Hey, hundred dollars from Warbuzan. Studios the man gotta support my NACL bros. We got fifty-five dollars from Rickane fifty-eight. Thanks for doing this event to raise cancer awareness. I had an aunt who passed away from cancer this week, and my friend Sam currently has currently has two lung cancer. So this in their honor. We also have $50 from Isaac. My aunt died of cancer while I was a baby, but I always hear stories of her. I'd love to congratulate everyone who both takes part and donates to this event for their generosity. I'll likely donate again, though, if the crowd stands up and does a small dance. Get on it! I wish I could turn around right now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I think, I think this was these cables. Idea. These cables, man. I think I may have just destroyed several hundred dollars worth of audio equipment. <laughs> Worth it. As we please. So, coming up is the pixel window. And it's called a pixel window because it feels like it's a pixel wide. Or at least a pixel of space I, I have to navigate into it. Um, it saves a decent chunk of time though. And if not, I have to fight like a billion soldiers. Like, I'm serious, the line didn't go the right way. Or the normal... Whoa! That was an accidental boost. That was almost new tech. Um, if I don't go the speedrun way, it's just a huge pain, and I'll take a bunch of damage, and it probably wastes about a minute or two. So, let's see if I can get this relatively quickly, just because it is a nightmare. This is not a good object to boost with, or to climb with, so it's like kind of evening it out, and hoping this recycling bin doesn't fall. There's also soldiers nearby. They tend to be a little bit annoying, but... For them to really narrow that damage down. You've got to see, like, hopping around. I'm almost there, but not quite. Oh, hey. There you go. <laughs> no item climbing needed. That is uncommon, but I'll take it. So this door's about to open. I need to make sure I'm right by it. I kind of move back and forth just to uh, trigger this cutscene. You can hear the combat going on, but I have to be right in time to uh, proceed through. If not, Alex talks to me for a while. It takes uh, a long time for her to finish. I still have to kill these soldiers anyways. What's going on right now is Alex is talking to nothing. And I don't know what that guy threw a grenade at. 
so let's turn around. Nope, not in the hallway yet. And once she starts moving, I'll move downstairs and clean out some more soldiers. It's actually dangerous to go downstairs before she starts running because if you kill all this stuff too quickly, the game will soft lock and Alex won't run to you. Normally, actually, I'll just show this off. Once she starts talking, I can go move up here, and there might be a bunch of friendlies that will block my way. But if I need more health, actually, I can yeah, max out a bit. 100 armor, 100 health is pretty nice for this section. It's not hugely important, but it's good to have. <clears throat> we were looking to join you, Dr. Freeman. You can be a jerk with these guys and throw their weapons away um, so they're unarmed. Uh, but I decided not to do that because last time I did that, I got into Karma and they blocked my path. So, item climb here. You can also do a collision boost or a uh, gravity gun boost, but I'd rather not because that is not a reliable setup. Go marathon safe. A man hat can also destroy that. Like that. <laughs> All right, we'll do this again without the man hack. Yeah, man hacks are actually one of the nastiest enemies in the game because they can destroy important objects like uh, boxes and barrels. Not barrels, but just any sort of destructible object that you can use for most item climbs. This is actually a really cool part of City 17, this uh, kind of sewer section. Um, there's lots of just very distinct movement. And I'll have to bounce around and do some kind of tight guardrail jumps. First, though, you have to item climb. There's a manax here, but this is a barrel. Barrels are safe to their destructive reach. They can still block my path, though, but usually it's not too rough. You can get a little bit of speed here by hopping. Okay, so I'm going to jump here. Yeah! Right, you open that door. Don't grab your gun. It. There's another relatively tight jump here. Hopefully, I can get it. If not, I can just walk around. I can just walk around. You have to jump off the right stair um, in that staircase, and if you mess up, you end up a, a bit too high or a bit too low. A bit too low is not too bad because you can just try to jump again, but you waste time. A bit too high, you end up on the ground. It's either reload or just roll with it. Yeah, and it's it's still fast though. I need this explosive barrel for a jump. The positioning is a tough part here. It's a bit too slanted, so I'll have to use a guard rail here to balance it up. No, no, you don't. Okay. Sometimes pos positioning barrels can actually be the hardest part. Oops, too fast. This moves a little bit to the side. down, straight up. Huh. Ooh. All right, that's scary. Source engine. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Yeah, just not enough speed. I'll, I'll blame this on Dom being late. I will use any excuse I can. Okay. There we go. Hey. There you go. And now that I'm up here, I'll do it again, and so I'm actually tight navigating. If I try and sprint uh, to that jump, it's very uh, easy to fall off. And mine here, pull those guys up. Pull up and pull those guys up, but it's okay. Coming up is like Sniper Alley, which can be dangerous. If I go fast, there'll, there'll be a mook to absorb some shots. That guy back there, I hope he gets shot instead of me. And I have to make sure I don't get hit by too, uh, too many sniper shots. They do decent damage, and they'll also have very high impact. Thing is, these snipers are actually very active. They're good snipers. You gotta give them credit for their job. But luckily, I can shoot them. I think I missed. That's oh, decent. So I need to take this uh, recycling bin or another item climb, or wall climb. You can do ABHs and all that stuff, like heavy movement with items, but if you move too fast, you'll actually drop them. And that can be very, very risky in a few situations. Actually, one kind of situation will come up and won't necessarily end a run, but it can be a pain. And it can theoretically uh, 
require a reload. So, I'm gonna be Barney. Something called Barney Luck. Barney is a very big source of RNG in this game. It's gonna come in a second. So here's Barney. I'll shoot the cross bolt, bolt at him. I'm not gonna use weapons for the most part, so it's not that handy. The problem with Barney is that he can be very good at getting distracted by enemies. I have to wait for him to show up here and I'll be able to set up a little bit of movement. Take a move now. Kind of hard to hear the, hear the dialogue, so I think he said the line he needs to say. Regardless, it's a long cutscene. The hard part here is actually navigating past all the friendlies with the item because it will block path really hard. But I need to use it for an item climb. But Barney will get distracted by soldiers really easily, and he's the combat guy. The problem is, if he does that, he won't be able to open up a console that, um, kind of like this one, will be used for seeing the game. So if I get bad Barney luck, it can actually cost up to four minutes, depending on how bad it is. So hopefully it's not too nasty. Hopefully. You can also get perfect Barney luck, where he essentially goes to, to just the right spot. So we'll see how he does. Whoa. Actually, that was a nice uh, launch, because I didn't take much damage. It'll make the upcoming section a little bit easier. My first time through, it took me like half an hour to figure out you're supposed to destroy those plugs, stop the power. This is the worst trick, by the way, to uh, mess up by doing too quickly, because you'll just blow yourself up with a grenade. So in this section, you have to just to uh, launch three orbs from the respective like power generators. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be safe with this health. The problem is, uh, once you launch those three orbs, I'm supposed to go to a console before he opens it up. Oh god. Okay. Uh, once uh, I'm supposed to go to the console, Barney might get distracted by leftover soldiers, because we don't take the normal route here. Normally you're supposed to uh, start on the first floor and work your way up. But it's faster just to start up here, um, walk through some turrets, take some fire, and we'll be okay. I almost forgot what I was doing. You can hear Barney triggering alarms. So that skips a, a long sequence where I would get shot and die if uh, I got hit by a laser. So this is a setup for good Barney luck. It'd be relatively fast right now, but I'm going to be slow and spend some extra time killing guards. To make sure Barney isn't still uh, aggroed onto them once the, uh, the next sequence starts. I have to put the stable here to block Barney, because if not he'll walk uh, through here and he can stop blocking the game. Wait for that guy. Quick save just in case. This door will close and a bunch of guards will start trying to soldier it, or solder it closed. If I get stuck like that, I have to reload. And if Barney's in the room and gets trapped, uh, the game is essentially over because the doors won't open. Hmm. Uh oh. Alright. <laughs> That's good to get that glitch. My movement's getting a little bit wonky. I'm getting a little bit sleepy. It's a very long run. Yeah. So, let's see if we get good Barney luck. Alright. I think we're good. I think this might be an issue later on. We'll see, though. Getting shot by those soldiers is not a good sign. But we'll see. I'm about to die. Oh, here. I missed the health. But here's Barney. So we got good Barney luck. Okay, come on, Barney. Oh no. Wait, wasn't he just here? I guess that was a soldier that I thought was Barney. So let's go find Barney, because now that he's aggro on the second floor, I have to go kill a bunch of guards. And once he aggro to the second floor, this is the bad Barney luck, and now I have to kill a bunch of guys. You can see the soldiers that we're going to try and open the door. You can also shoot them with the same weapon, but mine does more damage. And actually, you can see the animation of the door still opening. Try using the hoppers against him is the sign that Barney will normally start following me and that he's triggered into the next area. So is that. It's like Barney's taunting me at that point. And now that he's at the console, I can heal up, get some armor, and uh, prep for the next section. I have a squad following me, but they're not going to do anything. They just 
they're just not useful. And by the time this ends, this healing ends, I should be able to run back here and reach the door opening. So we're getting towards the end of City 17 into uh, the Citadel. It's actually kind of, I'd say, one of the harder parts to run. It's also my favorite loading zone because if you don't use a grenade, you run into those guys and they're just firing at you mid-shot when the loading zone actually appears. Because of the uh, work from Barney, those hoppers are now friendly. You kind of have to wiggle yourself in this position. Normally it doesn't take, it takes more than one jump to make it up here. Just, just trying to kind of like wiggle in. Go. I have to load up on a SMG from right here. Which is nice because it's also a bunch of health. Maybe this jump can be a little bit with Grindy. If I hit, uh, if I go too far to the right too quickly, I'll hit the side of the uh, toy right there. And hey! There we go. So uh, coming up is the uh, Strider jump where I have to make sure um, I survive being attacked by a strider for a bit, which uh, you can do by going a little bit slower or a little bit faster, uh, depending on your pace. The problem with going a, a bit too slow is uh, you risk taking a lot of damage from soldiers and the strider can still fire at me. So grab some health here. I want to be uh, as high as possible. I need all three uh, SMG grenades. Okay, so we'll just go with this. It's actually not that great, but hey, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of trapped in the spider for a second, but that's okay. Uh, Alright, we're fine. We'll almost die. But nine health is enough. And my squad is down to two people. Oh, crap. I accidentally right clicked. That's just a nasty habit with uh, having too much pressure on. Oh, there I am. Uh, too much pressure on the mouse. Like, holding the mouse can be kind of difficult because of the constant uh, scroll going. So, uh, an end result is just putting a lot of weight to try and do the scroll movement, and you'll just end accidentally right click. So, really sensitive right mouse buttons and really bad scroll wheels are a really bad combination for this game. Luckily, the scroll wheel is pretty nice. I accidentally fell. Um, the game will soft block if I don't make this jump, so I've got to be very careful about it. Right. And the easiest way to remove cords is with a bazooka. I have to force my way through this next guy uh, with a box. Oh god. Um, <laughs> how did one board get destroyed by a bazooka? <laughs> this actually might be pretty bad. <laughs> Didn't trick it though. So we're good. It's kind of like the first uh, clip I did with that card. If I'm too slow here, a strider can spawn, he'll fire at me, but I can just kind of wait him out. And here's where, uh, if you go too fast, you can accidentally leave a box behind. Luckily, it's accessible, but it can eat up a lot of time. This, I believe, is the longest item climb in the game, with the exception of the globe climb from the final part of the game, which uh, is not done by too many people. But keep on climbing on up. Make sure I'm getting tired. There we go. And if I start getting shot, that's bad. So I have to count to 10 here. Uh, this is going to go ahead and make sure triggers trigger properly. Because if not, um, I'll enter a cutscene here. Well, not a cutscene, but a cutscene will start. And Barney will do nothing. And the game essentially soft blocks. However, by waiting those 10 seconds, you make sure everything triggers properly. And we're good. And now, Dog will open the door. If not, Dog will just constantly do this chest beating animation. And uh, you can't uh, leave the area. Dog butt. Welcome to the final chapter of the game. Or our second last chapter of the game, final section of the game, it's our so benefactors. What's the uh, time at? One fifty-eight. Yeah. All right. This will be an okay time. I 
And like I said, Half-Life 2 can be a bit of a difficult game to run because there's a lot of cutscenes. And this final area, unfortunately, is kind of packed with them and in the worst way possible. Because at least in Entanglement, I can move around. Um, this section isn't, the final section isn't too long. I think it's about 14 minutes. But um, when I enter this, I can make no movement happen whatsoever. So I guess now would be a really good time to show off the portal gun again. <laughs> because we've got a kick-ass portal gun! Portal gun. It's really good. I'm blocking it, I think. Probably blocking me. Yeah. Also, and again, a reminder: the uh, minimum donation to be in for the portal gun is fifteen dollars. So, I haven't done this yet. I'm gonna take a selfie with the camera. Stream selfie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Selfies. Very blurry. I never take selfies, by the way. Something about this marathon? I guess we could go for donations. Yeah. yeah some time for donations. <coughs> All right. We got fifty dollars and one cent from the Burninator. Always love seeing games being played for a great cause. Also think the PC block should have someone playing with boxing gloves on their hands. <laughs> We've got $50 from Swag McDuffin. Yeah. I'd love to thank the AGDQ staff and runners by honoring you all with a modern swag coup, a haiku of immense swag. AGDQ swag, studio plays Half-Life 2. Can't think of last line. Kappa! <laughs> <laughs> In all Beautiful. seriousness, guys, I have the utmost respect and admiration for the time and effort spent destroying these games and working to destroy cancer. You too, Swag. We believe in you, McDuffin. So what this is actually doing if you're playing for the first time is it's showing you the Citadel, the horrible creatures that humans become while in here. I guess that's a spoiler warning, but you don't want to be taken to the Citadel. And the Combine soldiers are uh, stalkers, is what they're called. It kind of husks of men to operate in suits. Except for Barney. I forget. I think actually it's elite combines that are stalkers, everybody else is just the soldiers. Um, what's going to happen now is I'm going to be dropping in a few seconds, and I'm going to try a strat called Rocket Man. And if it doesn't happen, it's okay. It can happen. It doesn't save a lot of time, but it's, it's full when it does. But I'm going to be dropped into a section that will destroy all my weapons. But if I move fast enough when I get dropped in, there's a chance my rocket launcher will spawn opposite um, this gate. If that happens, I can go ahead, use rocket launcher, go for a couple boosts. Um, I don't get it very often, but I'm actually very unpracticed in it, so it could go pretty horribly. But it's also not a very consistent strategy, unfortunately. So so one, re board. Hmm? one reason segmented saves so much time is, uh, for example, that entire tram ride is skipped in a segmented run. Uh, it's not possible in a single segment. It's not even remotely feasible. Ah, oh, rocket launcher. Where is it? Where is that guy? Yeah. Where is that guy? Did oh, it did. Cool. Ooh, I can see it. The screen's a bit too dark. So I'll pick up this, pick up the rocket launcher. I have to heal up right now because uh, if not, uh, Rocket Man will just kill me. So I'm not very practiced in this, but I love this trick. All right, so let's let's see how it goes. Kind of. There we go. There's one. There's not the other one. I have to just make it across now. And I'm leaning too far to the right. It's a very small space to uh, cross. But luckily, eyes. that still saves time. So fun fact, I'm going to have to open some gates up. Uh, if I fire the orb too quickly, it'll go back in the slot and you can actually kill yourself that way. As I learned the hard way. And coming up is orb launch. I don't really want to spoil it, but orb launch is amazing. We don't even need to explain it. You'll know what it is when yeah. you see it. 
Here's hoping I can get the setup. The hard part about this is is definitely the setup. Your mentors are partly to blame, of course. My disappointment in Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner is far greater than the Oh, not feeling it. Blame, of course, my disappointment in Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner is far greater than my son. Oh. oh! If you tap, if you tap the edge of the uh, gate, it stops all your vertical momentum. Actually, show you a safety strategy. Ah, oh, I'm actually really bad. <laughs> I'm really bad at it because I never get Rocket Man. Okay. Oh, I'm clipping it too close. Yeah. So important, like the easiest way to get up there is to uh, launch yourself up like this and hit the the non-railing section. The problem is, uh, is that the way this position is working is a bit unfeasible. Okay, so we'll just go for Rocket Man strats to save time. There we go. Even though that took multiple tries, that still saved minutes. Yeah, it's like, a very long sequence. I'm walking backwards. It's kind of easy to get uh, confused here if you uh, move a bit too fast. I actually play with a really high sensitivity compared to most runners, which can lead to situations like that where it's a bit too much turning. All right, is SRG here? You? Did it go? No. Okay. All right. They're supposed to do something, but. Ah, oh, it's okay. I think I know what they're doing, but it's all right. So, up, coming up is the longest uh, of the sitting around doing nothing cutscenes. So, we have some time for a few more donations. All right, $50 from Milo188. Hey, GDQ2014, here's my little contribution to the fight against cancer. Keep the great games coming. Debussy from France, Germain Trumel. Sorry if I butchered that. $50 from Erosis. Here's to early detection and prevention. I had cancer when I was 15 and was lucky enough to beat it. Thank all of you so much for doing what you are doing. It means the world to me. Keep going strong. $50 from Zoc. Thank you, runners and behind-the-scenes guys, for donating your time to this awesome cause so we can band together Voltron-style to beat cancer. Just remembered I could have enabled subtitles, <laughs> which would have made some of the stuff pretty easy. Grenade launches would have still been uh, difficult, but some of the Alex stuff, that's okay. What, I'm not good enough to get on you? You're pretty good, you're pretty good, UA. Give me some props, some props. Uh, this is just kind of the final ascent into Green's Lair. And uh, I'm going to have to kind of travel up for a bit. We're now reaching the top of the Citadel, getting very close to its source of power. And Green will explain some of his plan. You kind of get a, a good hint at some of the backstory between Gordon Freeman and how he's a, technically a mercenary for hire. If you notice at the end of Cool Kids Run, when it said hired uh, for Gordon Freeman, he... He was now working under the G-Man, technically, or you die, one of the two. But the dying ending is pretty, uh, I don't know, unsatisfactory. How's the portal ver inbound versus out of bounds going? It's certainly very, very much in favor of inbound. Inbound's uh, all right. No, you stop <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not allowed to enjoy the run you do. I'm sorry, out of bounds. You, you had your day. That day is not today, though. I'll take him. Most importantly, Mossman still has that weird C on her shirt. Don't struggle. It's I am the Mossman. God, this is actually horrible to wear. <laughs> I do not like that a lot. I don't wear glasses very often, but the gunners just make everything yellow. Don't say that, we'll lose our sponsorship. I mean, gunners are amazing. <laughs> actually, shout out, gunners are bad for me because I just don't wear glasses very often, so it makes me sick really quickly. But I know people who actually enjoy them, so there we go. Stay in neutral. Gunners are, are good for some, bad for me. On another segmented versus single segment note, um, 
<laughs> Segment I actually can't skip that last bit, that last elevator ride. We could skip the first one, but not this one, because this one is broken up into chunks. Every time uh, the screen fades to black, it actually moves you to a different section of the map, and there's no way to move between those sections. Well, if it isn't Gordon Freeman at last. What's this? I'll put it over there. I'm sure even if you could, this cutscene would be horrifically broken. Yeah. Coming in here, not in the uh, not in the lift. Yep. You could probably just hop around a bit, maybe count the lift. Now, did they ever explain why the gravity gun charges up uh, from the energy? Like, is that ever justified? I feel like it should be, but okay. okay. All right. There's a lot of hand waving and smoke and mirrors there. Yeah. This game actually does have cool plot with lots of alien invasion. Like a lot of Half-Life 2's plot is actually explaining what the hell happened in Half-Life 1, because this game transitioned from uh, pretty much close to non-stop action to a, a lot, lot of uh, exposition in the game, and kind of made up for Half-Life 1. But um, that's a long, long diatribe about Zen worlds and teleportation. Oh, actually, talk about the end of the game though. So there's three ways to finish the game: uh, Breen climb, Breen, Breen launch, and the globe climb. So there's a globe. Globe climb uh, just involves using the globe at the very end to climb the final section of the game. And then from there, you, you just finish normally. The Breen climb is going to be using one of the statues, and you just do everything normally. And Breen launch also uses statues. Um, but instead of just kind of proceeding through the final section normally, you will launch yourself up with a console. But I, it's a bit iffy for me. It's, and it's it can also be very time consuming if you don't get it right right away. It's a way sketchier launch than the orb launch up the elevator shaft. Yeah. In, in another shout out to the Gocknack, Gocknack section, when he got World Record, I believe it was based off a, a Breen launch, but I think the time before it, he, he barely missed cutting, I think, 54. Was when he did that, he barely missed cutting 54 because he couldn't get the uh, Breen launch down. Like, you either get a great launch or you die. <coughs> it's pretty fantastic. Oh, it's hardly the words. You might find that hard to believe once you get there. So we're going to have to use statues in a bit to uh, item climb, and we'll have a fun little elevator ride, and we'll have to proceed in the final section with very low HP. It's actually really important to heal up before this cutscene, because there's not a good chance to heal up afterwards, and without an incredibly high amount of HP, you're probably going to die doing uh, one of these. Pretty much this game down to the wire. Down to the last, I'd say... Like the last 10 seconds or so of the run are safe, but everything else, uh, you can still mess up, you can still get bopped. Gordon Freeman can go into space and die. The usual. What do you think you're doing? We're doing what I could never do alone. We're stopping you. Yes. Guards, get in. There's a time. How's the run, guys? Face off the clock. Pretty good. All right, all right. Turn on you. Beautiful. Dr. Mossman, please. Sorry, Wallace. That, I think that's actually a different clock animation. I think they actually changed the clock based off the different cutscenes, which is fantastic. Well, if we go by in game time, I think this is what, like, a couple of weeks? <laughs> At least two day night cycles. So it brings a jerk. I think that's the only time you see a getting up animate. Oh no, Alex, you'll see it there. And here's this bust. So I need to stand over. Oh, why about my mouse feels. Oh, the president's sensitivity button. Um, we have to wait over here because Alex will come talk to us after finishing dialogue over there. And if I'm closer to the door or the elevator, she'll be a little bit faster. I can use this statue for a teleport, but it is one of the more unreliable teleports in the game. It's a little bit nice, makes the future a bit easier, but isn't hugely important. It doesn't, it doesn't save a lot of time, but it makes the final sequence a little bit easier. I want to keep the, the, the bus actually very straight. It's a pretty good bus. You didn't have to do this. I had to rescue my father, but you... Not nearly as nice as the limited edition Pike is Finley statue. <laughs> We'd show it to you, but it's in a box and we're not opening that thing. <coughs> Google that, you. So, getting this teleport, it's solid, but... It's all good in the end, as long as she moves. I don't, think she, I don't think there's a way to make her stop moving. I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm going to see Profanity for the first time this run, I believe. Hey, when he says shit, you got to be ready. So you throw the bus over here, pick up the gun. Item climb, item climb, item climb. Get over that wall. Get over that invisible wall. Land on Breen's head, and we can now have a pleasant elevator ride.
The most awkward elevator yeah. ride of all time. Green is not very comfortable right now. I'd love to ride it to the bottom though, but we gotta do relatively fast. I saved, I saved a bit of time because of getting the uh, teleport, so that's actually pretty nice. And it will make the piece a little bit easier. Uh, you can't see it, but if I jump uh, those blue spots, I'll die. There's supposed to be a beam there. This section is very bugged out, by the way, because I'm still gonna hear Alex's dialogue and then Green will start talking. Once you, once you kill that shape, you move forward without taking fall damage. Now I have to move to uh, try and catch the first cycle of an elevator that's going up and down. And like I said, everything's a little bit easier to set up um, because of that launch. So we just play patty cake with uh, an orb. You can get knocked off by an orb really easily, and that's like a big risk. 33 health will try and get a bit more. Yeah, 53 should be fine for the final section. Just have to make it on to you. Oh god, I got caught! I got caught! No! Alright. We'll wait for the slow climb instead of going for reload. I think it's actually fast to reload, but... You can kill some nukes while we wait. It also moves down really slowly is the worst thing. Uh, time will be when the uh, explode, final explosion goes off. Alex will arrive first. I'll, I'll call it out. So, this is the final sequence. Shoot orbs at bad guy. Bad guy being giant generator. Sometimes orbs don't show up. Oops. It is like a long scroll down to make sure you pick up the thumb. And if you don't have enough HP, um, you'll get killed by the helicopter. Okay. Keep firing it. Alright. Ready for time? Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, didn't work. <laughs> you can die uh, as the game ends, but I. Time. Two fifteen fifty five. I'll take it. It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in this And that's Half-Life 2. Um, this is G-Man's com final conversation. So Stuff happens in Half-Life 1, or Episode 1, but that's, that's it for now. The whole thing is like... Coming up with a portal and the portal's gonna be sick. Ordinarily I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Hmm? Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you, if and when your time comes round again. Alright, we're gonna go to a commercial real quick, but don't go